Okay, in this video, we are going to be covering how to send 10,000 cold emails per day without going to spam. I'm just gonna jump straight into it. This is the full cold email setup guide. Today, what we are going to cover is the exact tech setup you're gonna need step by step. We're gonna cover every software that you're gonna to need to implement the process. We're gonna cover how to create email campaigns and sequences. We're gonna cover where to find hundreds of thousands of email addresses of your ideal customers so you can email them. And we're gonna tell you how to ensure your emails land in the primary inbox, as well as the rules of a good cold email script. And as well as uh, at the end, I will re reveal a proven cold email framework that we have used to book thousands and thousands of sales calls. So stick around to the end for that. This is gonna be a value packed video. Uh, we're, not gonna make my, uh, we're not gonna muck around too much as much as my face and uh, you know, ability to speak might suggest that we would. Uh, but this is gonna be a big one, so stick around. What this is gonna allow you to get is you can sign up to 15 clients per month, even more. You can sign basically as many clients as you want from this, because if you can send 10,000 email addresses, 10,000 emails per month, uh, and you might get you know five to 10 to 20% of those responding, you might have five to 10 to 20% of those responses being positive, and all you need to do is do the math. As a matter of fact, we might just do. So I just spun this up off the top of my head, but if you are sending 10,000 cold emails per day, which is very possible with this system, and only 10% of them reply, which isn't that many, and of those 10% 10, 10 of 10,000 is 1,000, so you have 1,000 total replies times a 10% positive reply rate, so 10% of the 1,000 replies are positive, which again, isn't really unachievable. Uh, and then you have those 100 replies and 20% of those book a meeting with you. That means you're gonna be booking 20 sales calls per day. You might have 25% close rate and you might even sign five clients per day. And obviously that's if you're sending a lot of volume, 10,000 per day. That's what Matt did when he was scaling his agency. So we're just gonna get into that today and you're gonna get the exact system every single step, literally every step. So don't worry about that. Just stick around to the end of the video. Before we jump in, what we wanna know is the top four problems that every single agency has. Number one, that no one knows who you are. Number two is that you don't generate enough leads. Number three is that all of your clients come from referrals and you don't get any clients from cold traffic. And number four is that 99% of your clients can't afford to work with you uh, or are just not a good fit. So 1000X Leads is designed to solve all of these problems and you will solve all four of these problems if you just implement what is in this video. And it's obviously completely for free, not gonna charge you for anything here. Uh, but what you can do is you can join uh, my 16 week consulting program if you want. Uh, we can help you implement all of this stuff. It costs 4K right now as a one-time fee. You get daily calls, private Slack channel with me and my co-founder, templates for ads, landing pages, and more. You get every single task uh, that you'll need mapped out in Trello. We get accountability uh, and daily support. So you can see that more information in the description. We'll also have some more free trainings in the description uh, and you can book a call there as well. Or if you wanna just join, uh, we have some automatic onboarding there if you wanna just pay the invoice. So without further ado, here is the introduction. What is cold email? A cold email is basically a type of email that is sent to a recipient without prior contact or a pre-existing relationship. The term cold uh, is used in a similar way to cold calling, uh, indicating that the initial contact is unsolicited, meaning they didn't ask to be emailed, you don't have a relationship and they don't know or trust you. So this is stuff that we absolutely have to understand if we want to get it to actually work. And if you want to ask the question, does it actually work? Uh, it works extremely well. And it is one of the best ways unequivocally to get clients in B2B businesses. If someone says it doesn't work, always add on the phrase for me or for them at the end. So for example, cold email doesn't work for me because basically cold email works. It's just a skill like any other thing. You're gonna have to learn, practice and execute, not try it once, fail and say it doesn't work. Basically, what, what I want you to imagine is if you were learning to walk as a child, you fell down and basically decided, nah, I guess walking isn't for me. Well, obviously that's ridiculous. You, you sound stupid. Uh, it's just that the same thing with cold email, you just have to learn how to do it and learn how to walk, walk and practice makes perfect. So here's a little meme for you that can indicate these people that say cold email doesn't work. No, cold email doesn't work. I hate spammers. They didn't give me permission or opt in. Ah, and then just have this guy right here. It looks pretty cool. A little bit cooler than the guy on the, on the left. And he just says, you know what? Cold email does work. Um, you know, it does. Simple as. In terms of this document, it's basically gonna act as a guide uh, with all of your custom scripts. So we have a custom script option. Uh, nearly all of the cold email questions will be answered in this document. So tools you need, instantly AI, list kit, domains, email addresses, et cetera. These are not free, that is life. If you wanna have a cold email system, you need to fork over about 150 bucks per month. If you wanna send 10,000 a day, you're gonna need a bit more than that uh, for these softwares, plus whatever it costs uh, for your domains and email addresses. So these are the softwares that you're gonna need out of the gate. 
instantly is to send the cold emails automatically. ListKit IO is gonna be used to find contacts to send the cold emails to. Uh, the domains will keep the cold email domain separate from the main domain, which is really important. And the email addresses uh, will be sending 50 emails per day per email address. Uh, so you can keep that in mind. The reason that you need to buy domains is that we don't wanna be sending cold emails from our main domain, meaning 1000xleads.com. We might wanna send from another domain. This is because cold emails get a higher rate of being marked as spam and other negative reactions uh, than our main domain ever would. And if any domain gets marked as spam too many times, that domain gets burned. Uh, and the emails will be more likely to land in junk, spam, and promotions. And because of this, we want to buy cold email domains so we don't burn our main domain. These burner cold email domains will be similar to our main domain, but separate. So try google.com, getgoogle.com, hellogoogle.com, and so on. So you can see here, 1000xleadsboost.com, 1000xleadsdemo.com, et cetera, et cetera. In terms of how many domains you want to buy, you're going to basically just figure that out based on how many emails you want to send. So you can send 50 uh, emails per email address per cold email domain per day. So if we wanted to send 1,000 per day, we would need 20 domains. So if we wanted to send 10,000 per day, we would need to 10X that, so you need 200. So 1,000 emails uh, divided by 50 per day uh, is 20 domains. And then we can determine how many domains we need based on how many emails we want to, emails we want to send per day. So for example, you want to know how many uh, emails you have to send to get a client. So if you, need, if you want to get one client, per 2,000 emails sent, if, you're, if that's your KPI, and you wanna get 20 clients per month, you need to send 40,000 emails per month. If you only send uh, Monday to Friday and don't do it on the weekends, that means you need to send about 2,000 two emails per work day. And if you have 50 uh, emails sent per email address, you're gonna need 40 domains. So you just have to figure out based on the maths, there's a little diagram there for you. Figure out based on the maths, how many emails do you need to send to get a client? How many emails do I want to send? How many clients do I wanna get? Uh, and then basically work out the maths based on that, knowing that you're able to send 50 emails per email address. Uh, that's pretty simple there. In terms of a domain cheat sheet, you're gonna have about 50 plus ideas in a document we can give you uh, that'll be available somewhere down below. But here are some guidelines if you wanna buy different domains. So all domains must be .com. Uh, do not use anything other than you know .com. Just don't use .org, don't use .info, don't use .xyz. Uh, no such thing as that, don't use it. You don't want to have any hyphens either. So you don't want to have a hyphen there at all. Um, that is just a negative, uh, negative reputation thing. So avoid that. You don't want to have any weird placements like hello and having the O as a zero instead of hello.com. You want to avoid using numbers as a general rule of thumb. You don't want to use marketing buzzwords. Uh, and you want to make sure that all of the words you use should be related to your main domain or service. And just use short words in front of your domains like get, try, buy, thousandxleads.com. When it comes to setting these email addresses up, you'll also need to buy an email address for each domain. So you have the domain, which is the website, and then you wanna have three email addresses per domain. Uh, you can have up to that amount, but basically one per domain is fine as well. Basically it just means the more email addresses per domain, just a little bit more risk um, compared to if you just have one, it's a little bit safer, uh, but it's really not that consequential, kind of up to you. You wanna name all of these the same thing. So your, main, your name at domain name.com. So for example, Matt at try, try 1000xlead.com, Matt at get 1000xlead.com, et cetera, et cetera. As you are setting these up, you wanna link them all together so they are connected. This will be an option as you set them up in GoDaddy um, and it's gonna be really, really obvious when you do it. You will also need to turn on SMTP for each one. There's a video on how to do that in this document. You can download the document in the description um, and you can find these videos or you can just search up that video on YouTube as well how to find, how to enable SMTP on GoDaddy. An important thing to note is that if you are truly committed to doing this, you should sign up for the annual plan and you get a big discount. So you can get up to 75% off if you do 12 months as opposed to monthly. Uh, I would suggest doing that. It's gonna take you a little while to get actually good at this. Uh, so it's really silly to quit after three months. Like I said, if you're just learning to walk, it's gonna take a little while to figure out how to do so. Then what you need to do is set up the domains and emails. So you need to add some DNS records. Once we have the domains, you need to add several uh, codes to each to validate them and ensure that the emails don't go to spam. These records are SBF, DMARC, DK, DKIM, uh, DKIM. Uh, and there's gonna be one SPF, one DMARC, and two DKIM records. As you can imagine, it's gonna be boring and tedious, but that is life, it must be done. Get some headphones on, get a coffee and knock it out. Pretty simple stuff. With the SPF, this record is gonna be the exact same for every domain and may uh, already be added when you buy the domain, but maybe not. So what that's gonna be is just copy pasting a record into every single cold email domain you buy. The DMARC will be the same for every domain as well. You just have to copy and paste uh, this little puppy in there. 
Then the DKIM uh, is the record that's gonna take the most time to add. There's gonna be two that you'll need to add uh, and you'll need to log into the Microsoft Admin Center and turn it on. It's very annoying, but again, must be done. Uh, it's absolutely non-negotiable that these things are implemented. Um, and because of this, we've provided some written instructions here, but also a video down below if you need to follow along to do it. What you'll need is access to a Microsoft 365 admin center, and this is where you'll manage your Microsoft 365 services and access to a GoDaddy account. That's where you're gonna manage the DNS settings. Part one is working in the Microsoft 365 admin center. So log in, open your web center, open your web browser, go to the Microsoft admin center, uh, enter your password, pretty simple stuff. Step two, navigate to the Exchange Admin Center. Once logged in, look for Admin Centers on the left side and click Exchange. Then go to DKIM Settings and inside the Exchange Admin Center, look for the protection on the left menu, so the protection. Then click on DKIM under protection. Uh, and then what you wanna do is generate your DKIM keys. So you'll see a list of your domains. You wanna click on the domain you want to set up the DKIM for, then click on Generate to create the DKIM keys for that domain. Then step five is note down the CNAME records after generating the keys. There's gonna be two of them. You write these down or keep this page open, put them on a sticky note, wherever it may be. Here we go to part two, working GoDaddy. So log in, get the tab open, go to the website, et cetera, log in, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Then you wanna go and access DNS management. Once you're logged in, you wanna find where it lists your domains and click on the one you are using and find and click on a button that says something like DNS or manage DNS. Then what you wanna do is go and add the CNAME records from before. So scroll to where you see a list of records, look for a button that says add and click it. A form is gonna appear in the type field. You wanna select CNAME uh, and then you're gonna have two sets of details from Microsoft 365. Enter each set in the form host, which is the first part in the CNAME record from Microsoft uh, and points to, which is the second part of the CNAME record from Microsoft. So repeat. Uh, for the second CNAME record and then save your changes, then all you need to do is wait for the DNS update because uh, it can take a bit of time, sometimes up to 48 hours. And then part three is enabling DKIM in the Microsoft 365 again. So verify the DNS update and then after a day or so, return to the Microsoft 365 DKIM settings page. Uh, and then if the CNAME records were added correctly, you should be able to enable DKIM. Then obviously if you can enable the DKIM and you're basically ready to rock. Then when it comes to your cold email software, part three, here is a bit of a guide for instantly. The first thing you'll need to do is sign up and get a plan. You would want the $97 a month one so you can add up to 10,000 contacts or leads. You might need to go up if you wanna send the amount of leads uh, that we were talking about in the start of this video. So just get a bigger plan, very, very easy. Again, this costs money, yes, but if you get two, 10, 20, 30, 40 clients a month, uh, it's a pretty easy ROI. So you can click here and get instantly AI. Very, very simple and then you can upload your cold email accounts to Instantly. So if you have your account, you'll need to manually sign up for all of your accounts through Instantly AI. Again, boring, yes, just needs to be done. It's a really good idea to perhaps wait 24 hours after you've enabled SMTP before you add your accounts. Uh, and the reason we need to turn this on is because if it is turned off, a lot of the times these emails are gonna get disconnected really easily from Instantly when you're to, gonna have to go and re-add them. So make sure you turn this on before, like you were told, be a good boy or a good girl. Don't be skipping steps, otherwise you are gonna uh, be absolutely killing yourself uh, and killing your ability to get clients from this method. We'll grab some instructions on how to do this with Google and Microsoft as well. We always recommend Microsoft accounts as they typically have less problems in Google, but we'll include both. Here are the instructions straight from Instantly AI themselves. So the links here again are in the docs. Uh, just go and use Instantly's methods there. Then what you wanna do is warm up our email domains for 12 to 15 days before we actually send any emails. The warm up functionality basically mimics human conversations between your email accounts, uh, basically like you know sending emails back and forth with, your fr with back and forth with your friends on autopilot. Uh, but in this case, your friends are just other instantly AI users that have also enabled the warm up feature. What this does is it essentially allows Google and Outlook to see you as a regular person rather than an absolute cold email spammer that you are. You're going to about to send ten thousand a day. 20,000 a day, uh, they don't want you to be spamming. So you wanna act like a regular human as much as you can, and that's kind of a good framework for deliverability anyway, but the more you do this, the better. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that all of them are being opened and a high percentage will write back with a thoughtful and positive sentiment. Luckily with Instantly AI, the emails are written automatically for you and they basically signal to Google Outlook and other ESPs, email sending platforms, that your account and sending domain is relevant and legitimate which increases the likelihood that the messages that are sent to the cold leads in the future when you start your outreach campaigns will actually land in the inbox and subsequently be replied and open to. Uh, open to and replied to, sorry. 
The bottom line is that the warm-up is going to improve the deliverability of your cold email accounts by mimicking human conversations in the Instantly AI user pool. You don't need to look into it too much. It is fairly simple. Uh, all that it does is sends emails back and forth. Then when you connect a sending account to Instantly, warming up the accounts also warms up your SMTP sending server and your IMAP servers as well. So on top of the deliverability benefits, your outreach email accounts also stay alive for longer and the likelihood of you burning through an account is significantly lower compared to if you didn't have this in place. Then what you can do is you can set up some Slack notifications. So one of the best features that I highly recommend you take advantage of is turning on Slack notifications and, no and connecting Slack with Instantly. What this does is it's gonna notify you whenever you get a reply so you don't miss any because speed to lead is one of the biggest indicators or predictors or determinants of uh, meeting booked rate. So what you wanna do is make sure that as soon as you get a reply, you wanna to reply to the lead as soon as you possibly can to maximize the chances of them booking in a sales call. Uh, and obviously this step is dependent on you actually using Slack, but if you don't use Slack, you know, just skip this. Kind of weird of you to not use Slack, but okay. The Slack inter integration basically just means that whenever something uh, happens, whenever a specific event occurs, you get a notification so you can reply. So events available for this integration are email sent, lead is interested, lead is not interested, lead is neutral, lead is meeting booked, uh, lead is meeting complete, not closed, lead is closed, lead is out of office, lead is changed to wrong person, email balanced, email open, reply received, lead unsubscribed, uh, campaign completed, uh, and basically all events. So to set it, you wanna go to this link. Again, doc will be in the description so you can grab the link. Uh, and you wanna create a Slack webhook. So you see there. Then you wanna sign in to install and click add to Slack. Then you wanna choose a Slack channel where you want the notification to be sent or create a new one. Then you wanna click on add incoming webhooks integration. Then you wanna copy the webhook URL. Then you wanna paste it into the instantly Slack integration window. Then you wanna select the campaign and event type and add the Slack webhook. And you should start receiving notifications in the chosen Slack channel when a specific event happened that you've chosen. Uh, if you wanna learn more about the webhooks and integrations, et cetera, you can just click that link. There you go. Then when it comes to creating a campaign, to create a campaign, you wanna to go to the left side uh, and click the arrow. Once you're in the campaign overview, you see plus add new uh, on the top right. Uh, and then as a next step, uh, type in the campaign, uh, type in the name of your campaign, sorry. We suggest adding a target audience parameters in the title, such as industry niche, geo in the campaign name, e.g. Uh, marketing director, advertising agency, US. Uh, so you can efficiently find and optimize your campaigns down the line. You're gonna be testing the audience. You're gonna be testing all the angles, all the locations, all the stuff so you wanna keep track of. Hey, I've already tested XYZ uh, ICP. I've already tested that niche. I've already tested the US, UK, whatever it may be. Then once you've typed in the name of the campaign, click the blue button to continue. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and then it's time to upload your leads. So we'll go over how to get leads in the next few slides, but once you do, come back to this slide and import them to the campaign. Again, it's important that you get not only the $97 a month plan, because that's gonna allow you to upload 10,000 leads at a time, but almost more than that, if you wanna build and scale this. So we're talking about scaling this, you're gonna need a bigger one um, if you wanna scale it. If you only wanna send 10,000 leads at once, you're gonna need the $97 a month plan, but like I said, we're talking big boys, we wanna scale this up uh, and start out hot. Um, if you get the lower plan, you're gonna be capped out at a thousand bucks, a uh, thousand leads at a time, and it's just not enough. It's not really worth the 50 bucks saving. You're gonna waste a lot of time cycling leads in and out. Uh, you wanna click on either one of the blue buttons and upload the leads and go from there. As a next step, select the method which will upload the leads, CSV, uh, entering emails manually or through Google Sheets import. More leads, uh, more lead import methods will be added down the line. Then you wanna create your email sequences. So paste in your body script and subject line into the first email that your leads will be receiving. So just there, step one, bang, you can steal my cold email script right there as well. To add a step in your cold email sequence, you simply click on add step. You can also adjust the time delay between the steps. So in step one, you can define how many days instantly should wait before sending step two, which is basically email two. And you can add as many follow-up steps as you'd like, although we'd recommend a maximum of three to four steps for most email outreach campaigns. So you see here, you're basically indicating, send the first email, wait three days, then send the second email. In terms of previewing and testing email steps, to preview any email in your sequence uh, and test it, click on the eye icon in the bottom uh, of the editing section right there. And you'll be able to see uh, what it looks like in real time. And a pop-up will appear where you can automatically see the preview of that email step. Uh, and in the top left, you can also send out a test email to an email address you specify.
Then uh, in the schedule step of the campaign wizard, you can adjust the days of the week and the time frame in which instantly sends these emails to your leads. We would recommend you send uh, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. EST to 5 p.m. EST to maintain the work schedule of most people in the US. But obviously I'm Australian. If I'm sending to Australia, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna send during Australian hours, pretty simple. Once you are happy with what you have, turn the campaign on. Remember that we recommend you send Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the time zone of wherever you're sending to. If you're sending broadly, just send to EST time. Most people work EST. If you turn it on and it doesn't send, check the time and the day. Most likely you won't be sending uh, in the times that you're actually looking at uh, and you should wait to see if it sends during these times. Uh, and then you can just turn off the campaign at any time with just one click if you want. So you can see here, scheduling the times. And this is what you wanna set up as well. Important notes here is that you don't wanna track opens. So if you track the open rate, it's gonna hurt your deliverability and it's much more of a vanity metric. Basically at this point, if you aren't getting 50, 60, 70 plus percent open rates, you're doing something drastically wrong anyway. Uh, and it's gonna just hurt your deliverability if you wanna track that. If you wanna flex it, that's cool, but really not helping you. Uh, and then number two, like we said before, make sure your domains have warmed up at least you know, at least 14 days before sending at least, you know, 12, like minimum, if you're trying to go quick, uh, really, really important. Number three, we do not recommend adding links or attachments such as photos to any of your cold email campaigns because it's going to hurt your deliverability again. And then when re people reply to you, uh, you are a trusted sender. And at that point, uh, you can send them links back. So if, you, if they reply to your cold email, that's when you can send a link or you can send an image uh, because that is when you're a trusted sender. But before that, if you're just sending links and photos to people all the time, uh, it's gonna be marked as spam and it's not gonna be trusted and the algo is not gonna like you at all. Number four, we recommend you familiarize yourself with spin tax because it's really important. What this is gonna allow you to do is use custom variables so that no two emails are the same. The higher percentage of difference that you have between different emails, the better. So the more different the emails are, the better. Uh, and when I say better, I mean, it's less likely that you're gonna get flagged as a spammer and Spintax helps solve that problem. Number five is that we do not recommend you include uh, an actual unsubscribe link, but it is a very good idea to put a reply stop to unsubscribe or something like that at the end of your emails. It makes you compliant with can spam laws. And uh, if they reply stop or whatever you said or reply, that actually counts as a reply to your email, which is a positive indicator for your sender reputation uh, and it will improve your deliverability. So if the email pro sending providers see that everyone replies to your email, you're never gonna get uh, burned. Next, uh, we need to build a list. So you wanna use a software to export a list. This isn't really the old days where you had to pay a VA to scroll through Google and manually write down people's emails on a spreadsheet. Nowadays, you can export thousands and thousands of leads in 10 minutes using software specifically designed for this. Uh, and you can build a targeted list with these softwares filtering for things like country, job title, company, uh, estimated revenue, number of employees, industry keywords, technologies, et cetera, uh, and much, much more. We recommend using ListKit IO for this as it is the easiest and cheapest after all is said and done. So there's a lot of things that go into scraping a lead list. ListKit is the easiest one by a mile. And ListKit is where you can get a bunch of leads, which are email addresses, to cold email. You can build a very, very targeted list for a very cheap price considering what it, the service gives you. Uh, you can basically just use a criteria in the software to find your leads in your target audience. And the reason we use ListKit is because it does a lot of things that other softwares simply do not. One of the biggest problems with exporting lists like this is that where the person doesn't work at a company anymore or the comp uh, or their email doesn't no, no longer exist, basically, uh, they still stay on lead lists. So when you export from these lead lists that aren't ListKit IO, you'll find that 40% of the leads are not valid anymore, like I said, because the person who had the email address might not work at the company anymore. They might've changed their email address. They might've deleted their email address. And most softwares just disregard this and they make you waste up to 40% of the money that you just spent on your lead list. So what ListKit do is they basically clean it for you. So when you use ListKit, you also won't have to clean or verify the leads to filter out which ones are good and which ones aren't. When you use a different software, you have to put them through, you know, basically a three ring circus in order to clean and verify the leads that you get from other softwares. Because basically you never want to send cold emails to leads that aren't clean or verified because they bounce back. So if you send an email to an email address that doesn't exist or it's broken or whatever it may be, it is very, very bad for deliverability. But like I said, the nice thing about ListKit is that it cleans and validates your leads for you before you export them. So you don't pay for leads that don't exist. You don't pay for email addresses that don't exist. Uh, so that saves a lot of time. And you also don't have to pay for a separate software to verify them. Uh, and it might be a bit more expensive, but 
the reason that it's a bit more expensive is because it saves you time uh, and it saves you another cost of multiple other softwares. Uh, so it evens out quite nicely over time. So the summary of the benefits is that they're triple verified to ensure no bounces. You can scrape thousands of leads in a minute uh, instead of days on other platforms. Number three is that the database refreshes every two hours. So it has the most up-to-date and accurate data. And number four is that you also get a one-to-one -one onboarding call with their list building experts. Uh, and all of these reasons uh, are basically why we recommend using it. So I especially like the onboarding call with the experts. And uh, this can really help if it's your first time doing it. If you've never done it before, just make sure that you get that done. We also have attached a export guide here from our man, Daniel Fazio, the good boy right there. And one from Christian Bonnier, the legend right there. The next part is about ensuring deliverability. So the reason this is so important is because if your emails are going to junk or the spam or the promotions tab, then less people are gonna see it. If less people see it, less people re will reply. With less replies, you book less calls. With less calls, you make fewer sales. So deliverability is very important. Do not half-ass this and follow every single instruction that I'm about to go over. Here is a list of things to consider to make sure the maximum number of your emails will land in the inbox instead of in junk or spam. Number one, dot com emails only. Number two, DKIM, DMARC, and SPF records added to your DNS. Number three, your emails are warmed for 15 days and instantly. Number four, you have a clean list with no bad quality emails. You use ListKit. Uh, bounces are super bad for your deliverability. Number five, you have a good amount of spin tax in your email, so no two emails are the same. This will be built-in scripts that we write for you, or you'll have to learn it for yourself. Uh, number six is that you don't want to send more than 50 emails per domain per day. Number seven, only send Monday to Friday to mimic real human behavior. Number eight, turn off open tracking. There's no need for it and it just hurts you. Number nine, do not include any images or attachments in your cold email uh, before they reply. Then after they reply, you can. Number 10, don't include any links in your cold email. Again, before they reply, after they reply, you can count, you can. Number 11, put something at the bottom for them to unsubscribe, such as stop to unsubscribe. This is for compliance, uh, but if they reply, obviously it gives you that bonus that someone replied to you. And the next part is creating your scripts. Again, we will do this for you uh, if you are part of the program. Um, but what you can do is if you need to learn this, we can cover it a little bit briefly. In terms of the subject lines, you wanna use uh, it's best to mimic internal communication from a company. For example, subject lines like quick question or paid ad question or you know something simple like that. You don't wanna overcomplicate this. You wanna to stick to simple subject lines that provoke curiosity uh, and try different ones to see which is best. Um, as Nick Abraham says, testing subject lines is pointless. You shouldn't even be tracking open, so hard to get results, basically not even any point. Stick to what works, thoughts, first name, service question, happy first day of the week, uh, you know, first name. Don't, you don't need to waste your time. Just do, use the proven ones. Then you have spin tax with your cold email scripts. So again, you can have the best cold email scripts in the world, but it's not gonna reach your leads if deliverability is low. You can warm up your inbox, your inbox but if your emails still get caught by clients uh, spam filters, uh, email client spam filters if your email sounds identical. So what you wanna do is use spin tax. Spin tax is a way to randomize specific words and phrases in your emails. Uh, and the most basic example is using something like this right here. So hi, hello, uh, hey. So you can see here, whenever you send an automated email, spin tax will choose a variation. So one batch of emails will go out, hey Mark, and others will go, hello Mark. Uh, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. So you wanna read on for some more examples. Email providers, uh, look at your content similarity. So while you vary personal information, most of your emails will be about 95% similar. And no matter how many, how warmed up your email inbox is, uh, email clients will still flag it for spam. So fewer and fewer of your leads will get your emails. And in the best case scenario, you'll land in the promotions tab. Spin tax, on the other hand, makes your automated email sound unique uh, and they appear unique and a higher percentage of the emails will be more different. Um, and that basically means specifically meant for the lead that you're emailing. This alongside sourcing verified email addresses for each lead shows the email sending providers, that's what I mean when I say clients, uh, that you are non-spammy and it improves your reputation. So here is an example of a cold email. So random, hey, hello there, good day, hi, how are you? Hello, hey, happy, now, blah, blah, blah. You can pause this if you wanna see uh, just the slight differences we can make. So Matt, Matthew, Matt Larson, Matthew Larson, 1000X Leads, 1000XLeads.com, founder of 1000X Leads, co-founder of 1000X Leads, uh, very, very easy. And you can also check this out for the guide straight from Instantly AI themselves. Then when it comes to the rules when creating a script, here are the frameworks you can follow. 
Number one, do not talk about what you want, only talk about what they want. So frame everything you do in terms of how it could benefit them. Number two, do not hide your intentions or give false compliments. Get to the point and don't be phony. I see a lot of people saying, oh, your landing page is so gorgeous. How can I help you? Like everyone knows you're trying to sell them stuff. Just be direct. Number three, your emails should be short and to the point, no long paragraphs. They have not asked to be contacted. They don't want to hear your life story. They don't want to hear how cool you are. They don't want to hear about your new dog, your, un your auntie, your uncle, whoever it may be. Uh, they don't want to read paragraphs. Simple. Number four, always have some way of moving forward, such as if I could help you do X with your Y, uh, your offer, would you be interested in speaking? Number five is try and incorporate any kind of social proof that you can and make sure that your offer is very, very clear. So this is simple stuff. How many emails to send? So in general, you wanna send three emails across seven business days. Number one is gonna be the original email. Number two is a follow-up and number three is a second follow-up. The truth is that if they haven't responded by the second follow-up, they probably aren't going to and they probably don't care. So in normal sales, like a prospecting situation, if you're a BDR, if you're a sales rep, you're probably gonna follow up way more than that, but it's gonna be personalized. This is cold email, so you wanna avoid that. They never ask to be contacted. They've not expressed any interest in you or your business and you're kind of spamming them. And if you send more than three emails, you're much, much, much more likely to get marked as spam. Uh, and then your domains are gonna get ruined and you're gonna have to set them up all over again. So it's best practice to just cap it at three emails. Something like this will work uh, a couple of days apart. Then as you progress, you can start testing different variations of copy against each other and find which ones work best based on actual data and sales. In fact, instantly uh, you can test as many different versions as you want simultaneously uh, and how many you test will usually be determined by how many emails you send per day. For example, if you send a thousand emails per day, you don't really need to be sending, testing 25 different angles. Uh, at the same time, you can stick to two to three and you just wanna know the option is available so you can dramatically improve your results over time and test a lot of different angles to see what is resonating. When it comes to uh, responding to the emails when someone replies, there's a little bit of a cheat sheet here. When people reply, you basically have to determine the best way to respond to move things forward and towards the sale. Obviously, those two situations are gonna be the exact same, but there are some key points that are gonna to apply to almost any situation. Number one, always try and make it easy for them, as easy for them as possible. You don't wanna send them a calendar link. You, uh, you wanna send them specific times and then manually schedule the Zoom call for them. Don't make them do anything. Don't make them lift a finger. Just say, hey, does this time or this time work? Okay, cool. I'll book it in. I'll send you an invite. Easy. Number two is one of the best things you can do is send them a loom explaining who you are and what you are offering. This is gonna show your face, get them comfortable with you and give them the information they need to know about your offer. The last thing you wanna do is get on a call with them and they have no idea who you are, what you're selling and they completely misunderstood what you're saying. It's a great way of wasting everyone's time. Do not do that. Number three, always make sure you have call reminders sending to them from Calendly. This is gonna make a high percentage of people show up to the call and it's also gonna warm them up before they even get there. So it's really, really important. Number four is that following up here is different than what I said before about only having three follow-ups. That was for a cold email setup when they haven't even asked to be emailed. Now, once they have sent, uh, sent back interest, you should follow up as many times as you can possibly think of for years if you have to. So once they reply positively, you should be like a rabid dog getting, them, uh, getting on them. Uh, we wrote this when we had a community. We no longer have a community, so you will not be getting help with this in the Discord. Uh, but we do have a special offer. We will do this completely done for you. We'll set this up for you for 3K. Uh, this includes everything uh, that you can think of for cold email. So like putting in a coin uh, and a cold email system pops out. So we'll get the domains for you. Uh, we'll get the email addresses for you. We'll set up the DNS for you. We'll add them all to instantly. We'll warm them up in instantly. We'll get your list for you uh, and we'll write your scripts for you. Uh, and then we'll set up Slack notifications for all your responses uh, and we'll manage it for one month. So if you're interested in that, you can book a call. I'll leave the link in the description uh, and we'll give you this bonus here for you. I believe this was made by Nick Abraham uh, and it's great, uh, great, great work from a friend of ours, Nick. And it's basically high first name, personalized first line. If I could generate X result with a risk minimizer, would you be interested in speaking? So for example, hi, I saw your LinkedIn post about 123 Marketing Summit. How was it? If I could make you 60 short form video clips with 30 minutes of your time, would you be interested in speaking? That is the entire system A to Z. That's basically all you need. We'll be making many, many more videos much like this. We also have trainings and a bunch of free goodies in the description. So check that out and I will see you in the next video.